Hey, how are you? Nice to meet you. Doug, nice to meet you. Doug, good to meet you as well. Hi, I'm Talon. Thanks good for coming. Good to meet you. Come on, let's sit down. So, I hear we have some cat-on-cat -cat aggression. Tell me about it. We have two cats that don't get along. Okay. Mudgy had a pelvis that was shattered and healed incorrectly, so she has nerve damage. She can't pee or poop on her own. Wow, that's a challenge. And how often a day do you wind up expressing her? Once in the morning, once in the evening. Yeah. Okay. And she prefers the way you do it. Yeah. You don't do it? I've tried, but she gets so stressed out. Huh. Mudgy's bowels and her bladder need to be manually expressed, which is a tough thing to do, but that tells you how involved and how committed Doug is to this cat. Who's this? This is Mudgy. Hello, my love. Her tail is dead. Oh, wow, it's totally dead. Yeah. When it comes to communication, tails are crucial. The tail will say, I'm totally confident, I'm totally scared. She doesn't have that, so that makes this even a harder case. We adopted Godzilla. But when we got her, we discovered that she's deaf. OK. Um, so right. we basically have one cat who can't hear, another cat who can't communicate with her tail. We've walked in and seen pools of blood on the floor. Oh. At this point, I'm sleeping down on the couch because I'm concerned about the safety of Mudgy. And Talon is upstairs with Godzilla. I got a husband and a wife sleeping on separate floors in order to keep their deaf cat from attacking their disabled cat. This house is completely divided. And if we can't figure out a solution, it's going to crumble under the pressure. I'm hearing, Doug, that Mudgy is more yours. Definitely. Does that make Zilla yours? Yeah. I can't even pick her up. I mean, claws, everything. Oh, dude, that looks fresh. That is fresh. I really, I just want to take Godzilla back. I'm not ready to give up on her yet. OK. Push come to shove, I've got to protect Mudge because of her health. Now, this is a disaster. In order to find out why Godzilla responds to Doug with aggression, I need to see it firsthand. Hi. How you doing? Mind if I say hi? Godzilla can't hear me, but she can see me, so I'm moving my hands around to test where her visual boundaries are. Ow, ow, those are sharp, man. Do that. Ow, ow, dude, Ooh. ouch. Oh. You're seeing this, right? Yeah. If I'm just right here, it makes her nervous, but if I come in the back, Ow, ow. Ooh, she got you good. Huh? Ow, she got me good. By pushing Godzilla's challenge line, I learned that she only attacks when I come at her from behind, and that makes perfect sense to me. I mean, Godzilla's deaf. She can't hear, and because of that, she relies solely on her vision. So if she can't see or hear me coming, that poses the ultimate threat, and that tells me that Doug has been approaching her all wrong. So I do want to see her with Mudgy, because to me, that's a huge point. OK. Um, now that Godzilla's in attack mode, I want to see how she reacts to Mudgy. The more these guys make eye contact, the more information I'm going to get. There's no way to prepare for what you're going to see. Now, this is that 1,000-yard stare when she trains onto Mudgy. Yeah. That look is something to be concerned about. Now, when one cat stares another cat down, that's the first sign of conflict. And it's often a precursor to violence. And I did not like the way Godzilla was staring at Mudgy. As always, I had to push their challenge line. Here's what I'm going to do. I want to keep this safe, and at the same time, I got to see reactions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick her up. Now, since Mudgy's tail can't signal things like stay away or I'm not a threat, she has to use verbal cues like hissing to let her stance be known. The problem is Godzilla can't hear her. I'm going to bring her as close as I can here. And up, oh, and there we go. I wanted to see if Godzilla would attack. She didn't, and that's a good sign. But I had to try one more time. If Godzilla stays, that tells me it's just play aggression and she doesn't want to kill Mudgy. That's something I can work with. All right, so Doug, I'm going to have you come on in. Oh. All right, that's it. Oh. All right. Oh, and then that's the reaction I was hoping for. Mudgy is just responding from all this time of trauma and just taken off off the bed. Since Mudgy can't use her tail, Godzilla has no visual way to tell that Mudgy isn't a threat. So she keeps a defensive posture, fixing her eyes on Mudgy as if to say, one step closer and it's over. I'm seeing cats who can't communicate and I'm seeing cat guardians who are divided. And I need to bring everyone in this house together and that's gonna be a huge challenge. The first thing we're gonna look at is you guys. 
You guys are gonna switch roles a little bit. So, Doug, you're expressing her twice a day. I'd like you to take that job once a day. Now, what I need is for Doug to back away from Mudgy a little bit, and I need Talon to feel some sympathy for Mudgy because right now she's way too attached to Godzilla. And Doug, you're going to take over Godzilla work. I want you to be in charge of leading her down here. And when you approach Godzilla, make sure you do it head on so she can see you and come under, not over her head. Also, I'd like you to find a toy that works well with her. Get her to play as long as you can. In the meantime, you're hanging with Mudgy. If Doug is ever going to be able to pick up Godzilla, I need Godzilla to see Doug as a friend, not a foe. So Doug has to be the source of good things like play. Now, secondly, I need Godzilla to be around Mudgy, but I need Godzilla to be focused on a more appropriate target, like a toy. And I need Mudgy to get used to Godzilla's presence without any violence. Finally, let's make sure your cat tree is intact and has no dead ends. It could be as easy as cut a hole in the other side of that box. We have to be cognizant of the greater good for these cats. If we don't get where we want to get, we have to have a conversation as best we can about Godzilla's future in this house. Mudgy's health is in question. But walking in here today, I need to see that Godzilla is no longer attacking Mudgy at all. Mudgy's safety is a life or death situation. So rehoming Godzilla is still very much on the table. Hey, it's Hi. how are you? Hey, Doug, how are you, man? Good, how are you? It's good to see you. You too. Tell me something, guys. Give me good news. How are things going with Godzilla and Mudgy? There have been any attacks whatsoever? No. So, no. No, no, no. Now what? No. Yes! Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the cat. That's amazing. I'm not worried about Godzilla attacking Mudgy, hurting her. It's going to keep getting better. Well, the bell has the bell. been a great early warning system. Isn't that hilarious? It all comes down to a bell. bell. Mudgy now can hear it, so she can't sneak up on her. Now. Yeah, cool. Well, like, yeah. completely stop the hunter mentality. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's helped Mudgy get her confidence so she can stand her ground. And it's like, OK, you know, if you come at me, this is going to hurt you more than it is me. What else do you think's helped Mudgy? I think it actually has to do with Talon being able to express Mudgy. Wait, stop. Congratulations. Thank you. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. Now Talon has a role in taking care of Mudgy, and that's a really big thing. <laughs> Doug, you were sleeping on the couch because right. you didn't want to leave Mudgy alone. Tell me that you guys are sleeping in the same bed at this point. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Okay, now that's success right there. That's when you know it's cute. Doug got his bed back. <laughs> now I'm able to go to sleep at night and not worry about Godzilla coming down to attack Mudgy. And it's been nice to have some good sleeps at night. Are you able to pick Zilla up yet? No, I haven't been able to do that quite no, yet. No, no. Well, we are definitely going to work on that today. OK. But come on, let's get cracking. Perfect. Before I leave, I need to know that Doug feels confident enough to pick up Godzilla. He's put into work, he's ready, and I want to see the final step in this bonding process finally take place. All I want you to do, scoop, put her down. That's it. We were never successful at, at doing the pick and pass, so I was afraid that he was going to ask us to do it. First thing is to make sure she can see you. You don't want to startle her. There you go. She sees you. Remember, Doug, deaf cats are very sensitive to movement and vibration. Make sure you're deliberate with your actions so she doesn't have time to second guess your intentions. All right, dude, let's do this. Ready? Go for it. So we don't have to scruff? No, no, you don't have to do it? Oh, no. Just reach in between, pick her up, go for it, man. Put her down, come on, let go. Let her go. So Doug reaches in to grab Godzilla, and he's as stressed out as Godzilla. He goes for the scruff of the neck, which I didn't really want, and boom, off goes Godzilla. You want to go grab her? Yeah. It's all about fluidity. You can't pick up and freeze. That freeze is tension. The cat is picking all of that up. And the pet pass had to be one smooth movement. Go, go, go. Here we go. You're picking her up. That's beautiful. And you bring her to your lap. Go ahead with authority. Put her down there. Now to the ears. And dude, you just did it. Dude, look at that smile, right? <laughs> How do you feel, man? I feel good. You look I'm good. I'm stunned that this is actually happening. <laughs> well, congratulations, man. For me, picking up Godzilla and putting her in my lap was the final step in this process, because it allowed me to gain control of the house again. It was amazing.